Hi, this is Brandon from Tate Talk Tech, back here again with another video. So the other day I was uh, playing around with an application called Vert Builder. Now what Vert Builder is, is it allows you to um, generate uh, virtual machine images that already have the uh, Linux, uh, Linux OS already installed on them so you don't have to sit there and actually go through the install process when you're creating your virtual machine. So I was like, great, I'm gonna get to make my life a whole heck of a lot easier. Well, so I went ahead and actually, you know, Got my my um, my virtual machine set up, you know, which is the one that you're looking at right now. This is, you know, this is actually you're viewing it through Vert, Vert, uh, a program called Vert Viewer. And just to let you know, uh, I will be actually covering um, the QEMU KVM Vert Manager Vert Builder um, suite of, of applications in upcoming videos. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. And, you know, as I was messing around with this program, um, you know, I got my, my virtual machine up and went to go and do an apt update. Went to go do an apt update, like so. And got a bunch of errors, which is annoying. So then the next thing that I did is I went ahead and ran an IP address. Oh, okay. Well, we've definitely got some interfaces there, which is great, but you know, the Ethernet interface, which is ENP1S0, is showing state down. So, okay, you know, that's probably what it is. Um, it's, you know, it's probably just needs to be turned on. Because typically with, you know, most um, most of the default configurations for virtual machines is that they work off of a default network, which is usually set up through DHCP. So I'm like, okay, cool. Got to go ahead and just um, turn on the interface, which is, you can do with an IP link set ENP1S0 up. All right, and that should go ahead and bring it up and hopefully give us our IP address. And where it does bring it up, it does not give us our IP address, which is quite annoying. So let's go ahead and check on a couple of things. Let's go ahead and try NMCLI connection, which is actually a network manager command line interface that you can use and nothing. So, okay, well maybe Network manager is just not started. So let's go ahead and do network manager and could not be found. Okay, maybe it's a network D system, right? Maybe that was the issue. Let's just go ahead and and that one either. So, okay, let's go ahead and just make sure networking's up in some shape or form. Uh, let's go ahead and, and run the same command. Wait, but with networking this time and okay, cool. So we can see that networking is enabled on this system, which is great. Um, so what, but what that means is that we're going to have to do this the old fashioned way, which is we're going to have to either set it up to receive its IP address through DHCP manually, or we're going to have to go ahead and set up a static uh, IP address manually. Now, uh, the way that you can do that is through a file called Etsy and network and then interfaces. All right, so this is actually what that file looks like. You know, and we can see here at the top, it says this file describes the network interfaces available to your system uh, and how to activate them for more information see interfaces 5 and then source etsy network interfaces.d directory and then we, there we can see that first the next section is going to be our actual loopback interface which is the you know the ip address that points to the to the system itself uh, there's many other different uses uh, for that one of those common is to test the networking stack to make sure it works and then the other one here is we got our the primary network interface, but it says allow hot plug ENS2, I, I face ENS2, INET DHCP. Well, what the heck is ENS2? When we looked at our um, IP address output, what we saw was ENP1S0. So, okay, that's probably what our issue is here is that we have the networking file having one interface and we have our actual interface saying something different. So, you know, that's actually a, a pretty easy fix. And really all you have to do is if you already have, like say if you'd already had your your file configured, you can go ahead and just change the update. You just go ahead and change the, um, the interface name and then, you know, reset your networking and you're good to go. 
but in this case, what we want to go, what I want to go ahead and go through with you is I want to go ahead and show you how to set up the static IP address as well as the DHCP configuration. Uh, just so if you ever find yourself running into this situation, that you're going to be able to go ahead and make those changes. Now, keep in mind that, you know, you, some people are going to be like, oh, yeah, well, I don't need to do this. We have system, we have network D and we have network manager and these GUI interfaces. Well, fact is, you're not always going to have a GUI. Uh, you're not always going to have network manager. You're not always going to have network D. So sometimes, you know, you're going to, you may, well, I shouldn't say sometimes, but you may have to come back and learn how to do stuff manually. So, um, it's, you know, it's a really important skill to understand the old ways to, to better understand the new ways um, of doing things. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and open this file up in nano. All right, so the first thing that we can see here is like one of the things that we noticed is that the loopback interface is auto, where this one down here says allow hot plug. Now this first, these first, this first line here is basically just saying, well, how does the network, how does this network interface start up? Now if it's set to auto, what that means is it's going to go ahead and start on boot. But if it's set to allow hot plug, that's going to indicate that it's waiting for some kind of event, such as the Ethernet cable being plugged in or taken out. Um, typically, you're gonna want that set to auto, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, and we're gonna go ahead here and update the interface name, EMP0, okay, and make sure that everything that you're putting here is correct because it will not work if you don't have everything in there correctly. So if you saw that, I just did 1SO as opposed to 1S0. Those are not the same thing. It does not interpret them the same way. So you want to make sure that's correct. And then let's go down here. We're going to change this. This this line right here is saying, okay, well, how am I supposed to get my IP address? And right now, it's we see that it says DHCP. Well, we want that to say static, but we also want this to say ENP. I want that to say 1S0. All right. And then we want to go over here, get rid of DHCP, and put it as static. All right, now we're going to have to do two additional lines. We're going to have to do one for the address. Now, when you're working with uh, Vert Manager and KVM, if you're using the default network, it's going to it's going to be the address range 192.168.122.0/24. Um, what that means, that's the one, the, you know, the 24 is, is that 192.168.122 is the actual network ID, and then that last, that last octet is actually going to be your um, your host IDs, which is going to be anywhere from zero to 255 for a total of 256 IP addresses. So we can't use 192.168.122.0 because that's going to be the network address. In this particular network configuration, we can't use the 192.168.122.1 IP address because that's actually going to be the gateway, and typically that's a, a common configuration. Now, it's not the only one, but it's very, very common to use that first IP address as the actual gateway. So let's go ahead and just assign it a random address. Let's go 192.168.122. Let's just go with 67. Because um, we want to make sure that it's going to be on that 192.168.122 uh, address range. Because um, if you were to say, hey, put it at 121.67, it, that's a whole different range and it's not going to work. So you got to make sure that that network ID matches. Now we're going to go down here. And for these last two lines, you want to go ahead and indent them. We're going to put this as the gateway. All right, and as I stated, the, the the default gateway address, which is the default gateway, is just the way that you access the actual network outside of your internal network. It's going to be 192.168.122.1. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and just kind of double check everything. We got auto ENP 1S0, iFace ENP 1S0, iNet static. Uh, and then we got the address 192.168.122.67 and gateway 192.168.122.1. So, and let's go ahead and save this. All right, now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go ahead and restart the networking. So it's gonna be system CTL restart networking, if I spelled that correctly. All right, we didn't get any errors. So let's go ahead and run the IP address again. Ooh, look at that. 
now we can see our IP address there, uh, our network's up. So great, we've made progress. Now the question is, is do we have connectivity? So let's go ahead and one of the easiest things you can do is go ahead and ping your default gateway with the ping command just, and then 192, 168.122.1. All right, cool. Yeah, so we've got there, we've got our, we, we can ping our default gateway. Now let's go ahead and ping Google's public DNS server. Success, all right, cool. So we've got internet connectivity. Now we're gonna try one more thing. Um, we're gonna try to ping google.com. Huh, it's just hanging there. Well, that's weird. Okay, well, what if we ping Facebook? Dot com. Okay, that one's also not working. Well, what if we ping localhost? Okay, so yeah, we can see that there is clearly also some kind of DNS issue. And this is why I wanted to show you the static configuration first because typically what's gonna happen in a, in a DHCP situation is that when you get your DHCP information, it's also gonna give you your DNS information. Well, the thing about it is, is like, you know, if you're in an environment where, you know, there's no DHCP servers, you know, you're, you may need to manually set the actual DNS server. So that's the next thing that we wanna go ahead and do is we wanna go ahead and actually set a DNS server. Now, Typically, in most in most like at least home network configurations, your your uh, default gateway, your router, whatever you want to call it, is going to be an actual DNS server. You know, it's going to be able to go ahead and cache cache you know the websites, and, or if it doesn't know them, it'll go out there and get them on your behalf. Now, the place where you can set the uh, DNS server is going to be in a file called EtsyResolve.com. So let's go ahead. We're just going to go ahead and nano into it. Etsy resolve.conf. All right, so we can see here, it says search unassigned domain, it says name server 10.0.2.3. Now I have no idea what that is, and that is definitely not anything that's on any network that is associated with myself. So clearly we need to go ahead and fix that. Now there's a couple, you, there's, um, you can use multiple, um, you can use multiple different DNS servers. And if you want to use more than one, all you have to do is you just have to name, put the name, put the, put the name, the designation name server, and then the IP address. So in our particular case, we're going to go ahead and do 192.168.122.1 because that's our default gateway and it, sh it is configured as a DNS server. So uh, that's not going to be an issue, but if you know, if you wanted to add more, you could do like name server and then you could do quad nine. Oops. And you could name a bunch of other ones if you wanted to, but uh, you wanna make sure that um, you're adding one that's gonna be functional, it's gonna be able to go ahead and get you what you need. So then what we can do here is we can go ahead and do this. We'll go ahead and save it. And then let's go ahead and do another ping of google.com and success. Now it's resolving that. Um, and that's something that you, that can be, that can be a pain in the butt to diagnose is DNS issues. But you know, anytime that I'm checking the IP stack, if I, if I know that there's some kind of issue, I'm going to go ahead and check the DNS as well, because it takes me, you know, maybe 20, 30 seconds to go ahead and check the, the DNS. Uh, versus spending hours troubleshooting because DNS, it's it's hard to diagnose if you're if you know and you're going to think everything else and then that's one of the last things that you're going to check. But you know I like to try to put that at the front so that you know I can kind of eliminate that early. So great, you know now if, now if we do an apt update, we get it all right. So great, good stuff. Cool beans. All right. So the next thing that we want to go, next thing we want to go and do is we're gonna. I'm just gonna do another IP address here just to show you. 
Okay, we've got our 192.168.122.67. So let's go ahead and go back in here. Let's go back into the nano. Actually, first let's go let's go back to here. Let's go back into here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete these these name servers. All right, we're gonna put it back to what it was. And then let's go ahead and go back to nano. Let's see. Let's go ahead and make some changes here. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of these. Alright, so we've got it set there. Now the next thing we have to do is go ahead and do systemctl restart networking. And give it a second to go ahead and do its thing. Alright, perfect. It's another IP address. And There we go. It. Why didn't it delete the? Well, we can see what happened here. We can see that we were able to go ahead and get the IP address, the manual IP address taken off there. But for some reason, it's still um, showing. Um, but you know, that's okay. You know, I really just wanted to be able to show you kind of how to manually um, manually set this up. So one of the things, let's just try reboot and see what survives reboot. And one of the things that I'm never gonna claim to be as an expert on anything, um, you know, so right now I'm just kind of, you know, showing you what I know and sharing the things that I learned along uh, my journey with you guys. So it's been, you know, so I can try to be helpful to you in any way. So let's go ahead and do this. There we go, see now it disappeared. So we went ahead and did a reboot. Now we only have that secondary IP address, uh, that DHCP given one. Now it's everything's still gonna be the same, ping 8.8.8.8. .8 okay, and let's just do a ping Google. Now, one thing I want to go ahead, let's go ahead and, and cat out that Etsy resolve.conf. And we can see there that it automatically updated the, uh, the DNS server. So it's got everything that it needs right there. So yeah, that is how you can manually set up your networking configuration in, uh, in Linux. Um, so go ahead and hit the, hit the like button. If you like the video, hit the down, don't like button didn't like it, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel for future videos. I'm going to try to upload a lot more frequently than I did for the last two years. Uh, and I thank you very much and hope you have the greatest of days.